prescription for uh, investors or even for politicians. And to hear Illinois Republican Congressman Joe Walsh tell it, the two sides are still very, very far apart. Um, Congressman, what do you make of the markets today? What do you think they're telling you guys today? I, I think, Neil, it's, it's a reaffirmation of the fact that Look, this is the president's recovery. He didn't he didn't he inherited this recession, but this is his recovery. And for two to three years now, the private sector in this country is scared to death and they're uncertain with what's coming out of Washington. You know, Republicans have done our best to try to stop and change what the president's been doing. But it's going to take a lot of work. It really is. Now, I know you weren't at this Republican power at the White House yeah. today. Um, but the read I'm hearing from those who were with the president was that uh, he bemoaned the fact that top tax rates are too low, that he w kept going back to this tax issue that was a non-starter, I'm told, with the Republicans in that room. But that indicates to me the two sides are extremely far apart. Well, and again, I respect John Boehner as to what he said about the meeting. To me, Neil, this meeting was just a show for him. It's a show to, it's, it was a meeting to show that he's doing something. Who, who's, doing something? Really, who's doing something? Who's doing The president, the okay. president, Neil. Why does he have to call all the Republicans over to an hour long meeting where he spends most of the meeting, from what I've been told, talking? If he were serious about doing something, he'd meet with eight to 10 Republicans quietly. None of us would know about it. They'd roll up their sleeves and they'd get something done. The other disheartening thing is what you said. I, I just don't believe he has a clue. I don't believe the president has a clue as to what makes the free market tick. And, and that's being borne out right now. They have no confidence in his expansionist government policies. And that's what's killing the private economy. If, if, if the economy is slipping back into either something soft or worse, another recession, way too early to say. Um, what do you guys have planned? Oh, my gosh. You know what, Neil, then again, and, and, and understand, a lot of us feel like we came to Washington to rescue the private economy from this assault. If this thing continues, I got to believe that we can at least pull and tug him into more of a private sector uh, solution, getting rid of regulations, Neil, actually cutting taxes so that we can provide some some tax certainty so to businesses so they can grow. That's what they're so lacking right now. They're scared to death about what might be coming down the pike any month. So when the president and Democrats say things would be a lot worse now, had we not done all the stimulus, done all the rescues, done everything we did, what do you say to that? Look, they said our unemployment rate would be below 8% a year ago. Neil, this is his recovery. He came into office with the economy crashing and he made a decision. I'm going to use Washington to stimulate this economy. You and I know that's a recipe for disaster. Instead of getting out of the way and, and uh, easing the tax and regulatory burden on the private economy out there so they could grow, he did the exact opposite. And now he is bearing the fruit of that. I only hope that we can convince him uh, of the right way to go. All right, Congress, we'll watch closely. Thanks. Good seeing you again. Thanks, Neil.